Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing this beautiful Easter card featuring the Pink Fresh Studio Lily Frame Stamp and Coordinating Layering Stencil Set. And I really wanted to share a tip for lining up stenciled and stamped images in your Misty. This is going to make it really easy for when you want to do both stamping and stenciling. You will need a Misty stamping tool for this, but I think it's going to make your life so easy. Now here's a look at the color scheme I'm going to be using today. I actually didn't use the evergreen, but I will be using the coral reef, the candy violet, and the meadow. So I'm starting out with my Misty stamping tool here, and I'm pushing my stencil into the upper right hand corner. Now this is stencil number one, and it is the stencil with the most open space. Then I took my Lily Frame stamp and I lined up those large florals inside of that stencil while the stencil was in the corner of the Misty and I picked up the stamp with the Misty lid. Now this is gonna ensure that anytime I put my stencils and my paper into that upper right hand corner, it's gonna align with the stamping that I do later on. The trick is you want to make sure you start with that stencil pushed up into that upper right hand corner or any corner that you want to use. If you use your Misty in the opposite direction, you may put it in the upper left hand corner. That's totally fine. And you want to do a really good job, really get over the stamp and the stencil as you are aligning those together. So now I can easily line up all of my layering stencils here by using the corner of the Misty. And then I can just pop this paper back in at the end and stamp right over it and I know that everything's gonna line up. Now one tip I will tell you is that you wanna make sure that you're using the stencil with the most open space. And for me, that was the base of the florals. So that's the stencil that I used. So now that I've finished the inking of my first stencil, I'm going to put stencil number two into the upper right hand corner of my Misty. I'm going to hold it in place with my Misty magnet and then I am just going to start inking again. Now by using the corner of the Misty, I know that every time I put a stencil into that upper right hand corner, it's going to line up with the previous stencil that I placed before. So rather than using the alignment guides on the stencil, which you definitely can use, and rather than stamping and then trying to align my stencil with the stamped outline, I'm just using the corner of my Misty to line up all these layering stencils. Now, if you're only doing layering stencils, you can always use this trick if you're going to die cut it out. You can just cut your paper larger than you need it, put the paper and the stencil in the same corner, make sure everything stays tucked up into that corner, and then you can just move from one stencil to the next. Now by aligning my stamp inside the open areas of that stencil, when I had it tucked up into that upper right hand corner, I know that I can now go back and add the stamping on top of this and it's going to line up. So this was just something that kind of occurred to me. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anybody use it like this before, but I thought, what if I just line my stamp up in the stencil? I bet that will work. And you'll see when I go to add the heat embossing to this later, it absolutely worked. And I think I'll be using this a lot in the future. <laughs> So as I'm talking here, you've seen me go through all of the stencils included in the Lily Frame layering stencil set. And before I add my stamping and my heat embossing, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the Misty and I'm gonna heat set the ink so that I don't get any embossing powder sticking to any wet areas of ink that I might still have. Now I can take this paper and I can put it right back into my Misty, being sure to tuck it into that upper right hand corner. And then I can ink up my stamp with Versamark ink and stamp right on top. I'm gonna prep the surface of this area with my powder tool before I do my stamping. And then I, as I mentioned before, I'll just ink this up with Versamark ink and stamp this over the top of the stenciling. Now I do wanna mention something. I see a lot of people do some double stamping with Versamark ink and I think it's fine. I've done it before too. But recently I got a new Versamark ink pad and it's kind of occurred to me that if you're needing to stamp twice with your Versamark ink pad, 
chances are you probably need to add some reinker to it. So just keep that in mind. I went ahead and added the white heat embossing and then heat set that and it lined up beautifully. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up the coordinating die with this Lily frame and I'm gonna run it through my Gemini Junior and then I have this gorgeous die cut piece that makes a great focal point for my card. And I kept the colors kind of soft because I wanted them to feel Eastery. And I'm gonna use a lot of white on this card because when I think of Easter, I think spring and fresh and new life and um, clean. Those are the things that I think of when I think of Easter. So I'm using a lot of white on this card. Now I've gone ahead and die cut the Heather's uppercase alpha in the words or in the letters that spell out Easter. And I decided I wanted a little texture on these. So I'm going to add some texture by adding the rubber embossing mat from Gemini Junior to my die cutting sandwich. Now, if you use the standard Gemini Junior die cutting sandwich, there are instructions in the manual on how to do this, but my sandwich is a little different and I have some information over on my YouTube channel about that. So I kind of had to alter this sandwich in order to make this debossed effect work. And I used the Daisy Chain die from the Pink Fresh Studio March release and no it wasn't March it was February oh my goodness time is flying <laughs> from the February release and I added that to the die cut letters to give them a little texture now I am taking two plain white die cuts and I'm stacking them up by adding liquid glue on the front side and I'm stacking the textured die cut on the top of that that's going to give me dimension behind this texturized die cut letter that I created. And I'm gonna repeat that process with all of the letters that spell out Easter. Now I'm taking this all back to my Misty again, and I'm using one of the Misty sticky mats to help me align my letters inside this lily frame. So I have the Misty sticky mat with the sticky side facing up towards me, and I've placed my lily frame in the center of this mat. Now I'm using the grid lines on this sticky mat to place my letters down so that they're straight and even and all of that. <laughs> I don't want any wonky letters on this card. And I'm just kind of shifting them around on that sticky mat. It's not so sticky that I can't pick them up and kind of adjust them a little if I need to. But you're gonna see that I am able to keep all of these letters kind of straight up and down and horizontally aligned as well by using the grid lines on the mat. Now, once I have these all placed, I can actually pick this up and move it around. So I have everything in place. And at this point, if you wanted to, you could use some Glad Press and Seal to pick up those letters and then place them on your card. But I don't have any Press and Seal in my craft room. So these Misty Sticky Mats come in a set of three, and I decided to go ahead and cut down one of the three mats, they all have a different size grid on them, but I decided to cut down one of the three mats into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece and mark the center of it. So this is exactly the size of a card front. So I can use this over and over again. The Glad Press and Seal, I can't use over and over again. I guess you could use it a couple of times, but this I'll be able to use a lot. So I'm taking this and I am removing the backer paper and I'm placing this with the sticky side down on the top of my letters. So it's like sandwich, They're, the sticky sides are facing. But the sticky on the smaller A2 size Misty sticky mat is going to pick up the letters from the larger mat. You can see I'm just being very careful to transfer them over, allow them to stick to the smaller mat and then I can remove my frame from the larger mat. Are you with me here? <laughs> so now I have my letters stuck to this sticky mat that is the exact same size as my card base. So I'm going to flip this over and the back side of my letters are facing up so I can add liquid adhesive to the back. And now I'm going to take this and I am going to place it right over my card base and I'm gonna press those letters down and allow that liquid adhesive to set up. And once it's set up a little bit, I can go ahead and remove this sticky mat from the letters and my letters are perfectly positioned on my A2 size card base. 
Now I'm gonna take the backer sheet from the sticky mat and replace it right back over that piece so that I can use it over and over again. And now I am taking my stamped and die cut and stenciled Lily frame. It has two layers of additional die cuts behind it to give it some dimension. I added some liquid adhesive to the back and I'm placing that onto my card front as well. I'm going to finish off the card with a happy sentiment. And this is actually from a happy birthday die cut. It's from the classic words die set from Pink Fresh Studio. And I've stacked up three layers of this white die cut to give it a little dimension. Because I'm doing a lot of white on white, I wanted to change up the texture of some of these white die cut pieces as well as give them plenty of dimension so that they don't get lost on the card. And that completes my beautiful Easter card for today featuring the Pink Fresh Studio Lily Frame. I cannot believe I have not used this stamp die and coordinating layering stencil set before. It is absolutely beautiful. And I think this is a great way to make a quick and easy Easter card. It's coming soon and you don't have much time so you can get to crafting. And even if you don't make this particular card, I hope I've given you some tips and tricks that you can use for aligning your stamps and layering stencils on your cards in the future. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Thank you so much for stopping by and thanks for watching. I'm so glad you've spent your time here with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the paper crafting and card making video tutorials shared here. Thanks again and until next time. I hope you have a fabulous day.